Huh? What do you think about it? Huh? What do you think about the race car? Huh? Street car, I mean. Huh? <laughs> Sit. Uh, come here. Sit. up this is zach back at it here again today for down south racing today we'll give you all some must-haves for your boosted coyotes mine as an example with uh mr river here as a uh, fellow presenter today <laughs> all right guys so let's get into it all right guys so we're going to start up here in the front and this is going to be a mix of turbo car parts and just parts in general so you know bear with me if it's if you have a blower car or whatever or you have a really fast na or nitrous car some of these a lot of these parts are still going to benefit you so just bear with me here for a second but anyhow we'll start up here in the front and so my car is still a stock bottom end car with arp head studs uh it's got comedic uh mls head gaskets and it's got pack valve springs as well so you all probably already knew that if you followed for a while but if not let's get into some more basics uh first and foremost guys if you've got a turbo car Definitely got to hit up my man Jason Texera here with 1320 Junkie. As you can see, this is a Boss 302 intake manifold. What you don't know about this one is it is ported and boost proofed, and that's a process Jason does where he adds extra support to this intake manifold. Long story short, it's rated for 35 PSI for a plastic intake manifold, guys. That is absolutely insane. Um, so super wicked piece. I had a ported 18, you know, one of the, if not the most popular intake manifold swaps out there and it done really well for a long time but i will throw in a couple clips here jason actually posted it on his facebook and i you all will get to see the difference on the same boost how much of a difference that actually makes <laughs> Um, so secondly for turbo cars this right here is going to matter more so this is a motion raceworks vacuum block and every line now going to your turbos waste gates blow off valve stuff like that is pushed to connect so no more of those little barb fittings where they can just blow off we got some an fittings up here you know going in uh secondly i have an eboost 2 controller down there is my four port solenoid um I'm not going to say the e-boost is the best, but it is probably one of the most cost-effective, uh, you know, applications. So, it it does me extremely well. It's got uh, with the four port extreme adjustability and stuff like that. I think with the four ports you can go up to about three times your wastegate spring pressure. So, you know, that's really nice. Secondly, um, the uh, the next thing that I really like is this BNL catch can and coolant cob uh, coolant combo. Sorry, BNL fab catch can coolant combo and um uh, it just cleans up the car really really nicely up here in the front gets rid of that big ugly plastic one that comes from the factory although it's functional it does it is kind of a uh we'll call it a hiccup on the under hood looks and mine is not winning any beauty contest by any means as you can see it's nasty but hey whatever uh, so you got ports running off your valve covers from each side those go into here that functions as your catch can you can do a uh, filter here, but we just chose to do a vent tube. And here is where your coolant goes and stuff like that. The only thing I don't like about this is it doesn't have a drain tube. So if you want to do that, you've got to disconnect it and um, empty it out. Or maybe you could get away with doing something like a turkey baster type of deal. Uh, nextly, possibly the most important thing to not skimp out on, and by that I mean do not go cheap on, is your fuel system. I have a four level four fuel system with billet rails. It's got dash 10 feed, dash eight return. As you can see, we even put a push to connect fitting on there. Um, I don't think you can maybe see just barely those are the billet rails. 
And I apologize again, guys, for how nasty the car is, but hey, I'm only home a few days out of the month, so you gotta work with what you got. So there's the billet rails. Underneath those connected are ID1300X injectors. Uh, so my car runs on E85, meaning that I can probably push about 1200-ish wheel horsepower out of those without risking too many things. The fuel system itself is triple 465 pumps, so that's good for 15, 1600 wheel, but obviously with a stock bottom end, I won't be anywhere near that. And let's move on to some other features. All right, guys, moving about around to the back. As you can see, the car now has a parachute. This is gonna be a Motion Raceworks kit with a Stroud parachute. It is the larger one. I do not know the specific number on it, but it's for heavier cars that move faster and stuff like that. This is just a key tag, so like a safety pin, remove before flight, cool little thing right there. Basically what you wanna do, no matter which way you have this routed, this goes the opposite way of the actual cable for the parachute. That way, if somebody accidentally yanks the handle going down the road, this keeps it intact because it would pull it that way, meaning it would pull it tighter like that. Another piece that I added is this bracket to hold your cable. Evidently, some people have issues with like this just dropping after they pull and it can drag the ground, mess it up. And so for 20 or 30 extra dollars, I thought it was a good buy. Definitely be sure to hit up Motion Raceworks. They got tons of nice products. Here we have an Anderson Composites type ST trunk and ST stands for basically the fact that it has a built-in duck bill spoiler. Super nice weave. Fits really nice on the car and saves a little bit of weight. From this angle, you can see that the car is running on a set of F14 beadlock rears and F14 fronts. Uh, I recently powder coated the beadlock ring on the rear to match the white on the car. I think it definitely made the car stand out. And then the next point is gonna be braking. So a lot of people add a lot of power and don't add a lot of braking power, I should say. So what I have done is went with Bears SS4 2.0 kit front and rear and for those s550 guys who still wonder this was the kit that you can run a 15 inch rear wheel with although it's like a 15 by 9.33 and most of the fast cars run on a 17 anyhow so but that's beside the point if you want that this is available with this kit now if i had the money personally i would probably go tbm because i do think that they're better but for a mild budget kit this right here does really well it saved about 80 pounds which is of course rotational mass definitely helps the car as far as being faster but these are four piston front and four piston rear now. So they stop a little bit better than the base Mustang brakes, which are a four piston front and a two piston rear. Do lose your e-brake with these. So beware of that if that's something that you use frequently. Quick note, just wanted to let y'all know that yes, I did succumb to the bumper tab breakage. So I went with the push pins as you can see right there. Broken on this side, the other side is much worse, but it actually does serve a nice purpose and actually doesn't look as bad as I originally thought. I used to really, really dislike these, but I think with the car being kind of a white and black look, it doesn't look as terrible. And it's actually really nice because if we do ever have to take the bumper off, it makes it a much simpler process. Now, let's get into some more nitty gritty stuff. Back here at the rear, you can see we cut the valence out. My exhaust is dump, dumped up towards the front. So of course, all I had before was just the two holes in the back. So I think this looks much better. And supposedly it does reduce some drag, possibly giving you a little bit of extra mile per hour at the track. And then underneath, if you guys follow for a long time you'll know i'm a big supporter of bmr uh previously i just had their drag springs uh billet vertical links Let's see i had their irs supports and their cradle lockout level 2 kit recently i added um uh some lower control arm bushings it's bk081 from bmr and i also added some ford perform Ford Performance tow bushings, and uh, so all in the name of the game of helping the suspension react factor, faster, sorry. And as you can see over there, I now have Kelly Aiken's adjustable Viking Crusader shocks, and so those are gonna be his ultra spec. Definitely get up with Kelly. He sells some of the best suspension products on the market for S550 Mustangs, S197s, I think some six junk Camaro stuff as well. He is a guru, and he will definitely never lead you in the wrong direction. What you can't see underneath the car is a QA1 carbon fiber drive shaft that's rated for over 1500 horsepower. Uh, I went with the carbon fiber because if it ever does break, they kind of just like explode and shatter into a million pieces. If you want, you can look a video up on YouTube. I'm sure there's tons. Instead of breaking and possibly, you know, going up into the car and causing further damage to the car or the road. And to pair with the rear shocks, I now have Kelly's adjustable front drag struts we can see them maybe yeah so 
you can actually even retain your uh, uh, anti-roll bar on the front, your sway bar, uh, but I believe it costs a little bit extra, so keep that in mind. But all in the name of the game of weight transfer and extra traction, guys. So definitely recommend Kelly's setup. The uh, struts are a nice option if you don't want to go full out and get coilovers because they are significantly cheaper and way easier to adjust. Long story short, uh, at like say a track, you would want them full full stiff or full tight, however you want to say that. He's got specific shock settings for the rear. On the street, basically more or less you want them full loose. And so actually surprisingly, the car still rides really well with a full locked out rear suspension and you know, basically a drag suspension. So that's something to keep in mind. Don't think that this is gonna make your car ride like a dump truck. I think mine actually rides pretty good. And we will move to the inside guys. And as you can see here, and I have a CM Components rear seat delete. Jason Lopez, same guy who done my valve covers up there with the Down South Racing logo and stuff like that. He's got some cool products, so check him out as well. Over there, we're going to have our parachute handle. It's not NHR, RA legal mounted or anything like that, but for what I do with the car, it works out well. And the Kirky. Uh, is on some fat house fab brackets if you can see down there so it is solid so if you can note it's pretty far back and that's because i'm about six five six six so i had to move it pretty far back now still got the stock seat belt with some custom work there eventually i'm going to get some harnesses um but that's basically the changes to the inside here's my e-boost as you can tell we don't have it mounted like we're trying to win the beauty contest it's actually angled this way because it's easier for me to see in case i gotta click the buttons to move up on the set points or anything like that all right guys so in short if you got a boosted coyote there's a few things that you need to look at if you're a turbo guy you definitely need to look into a boss intake manifold if you don't want to spend thousands and thousands of dollars on a billet one such as plasma man or there's plenty of others as well the boss due to its runner length uh definitely works better for turbo cars um and supposedly i don't know this for a fact but supposedly when you port a boss you can actually gain the most from porting i think there's the most excess material on this this is going to be really similar to a cobra jet but fitting a stock circular style throttle body instead of an oval or a dual twin blade or whatever uh, so that's definitely one of my favorite upgrades to the car and the fact that this supports over 35 psi boost I mean, we're talking 1500 plus wheel horsepower cars so that's incredible i think joe holt has been deep deep eights maybe even sevens on this so it's very well proven and so pretty much everything other than that for any boosted coyote guy is going to work well i mean this would obviously work for a century blower guy as well but if you got a pd blower obviously you're not going to have one of those so but this definitely cleans things up the bnl fab catch can and coolant combo definitely want to go to a four fuel system guys if you haven't seen some of their stuff uh, id uh, injector dynamics injectors are my personal go-to i just think they're the best i got 1300s they go all the way up to probably double that i think 2600 plus but i know they got 1700s and stuff like that motion raceworks sells some incredible products so definitely be sure to check them out if you don't know cletus mcfarland is actually a part owner with them down there we got my k member that's a bmrk member drop some weight so the car now weighs 3450 pounds without me in it about 3670 with me like i said i'm about 65 220 so it's pretty light it's not tin can by any means still basically full interior with a kirky and stuff like that but basically guys this is a quick rundown if you got a boosted coyote you want to look into all of these parts you want to have good suspension you want to have good wheels and tires you want to have good brakes and you want to have stuff that maximizes your setup such as that intake manifold and stuff like that so being a turbo car or a century car that's something you're definitely going to want to look into other stuff you just want to you know drop as much weight as you can i don't have the lightest car in the world by any means i mean there's several cars that probably run tbm brakes and b-lock or b-lock i'm not sure how you say that but wheels super light and so you know they're definitely in carbon doors carbon hood those cars are going to be significantly lighter than mine but basically you know we have a parachute so that helps us slow the car down at the track i've only taken it one time didn't have a super big success but it did trap 151 so i was able to use it and it definitely does slow you down other than that what do you got to say river <laughs> anyways the bear brakes actually do a really really good job so no worries there all right guys so this is going to wrap up this video real quick i hope you found this informative if you have any questions about any parts please leave your comments down below if you haven't already please subscribe give this video a thumbs up i really appreciate it, it helps me out i am going to try and get some more videos out for you all 
when I'm home at least. And, uh, you know, I, so real quick, I actually work on the road. I do uh, RV transport, so I'm gone 20 plus days out of the month most of the time. But when I'm home, I'm gonna try and start putting together a few videos for you all. My car is nothing special by any means. Maybe my dog is, he's pretty cool. But my car, definitely nothing special by any means. I have built it over the past several years into what it is now. And to be honest with you guys, it's been low four, 60 to 130. It's trapped over 150 miles an hour on stock bottom end. So it's in the medium echelon of, you know, being a pretty quick car. Um, I'm waiting on axles from G-Force. Been waiting four months. Hope to God they send them soon. When those come in, I'm going to throw a trans brake and a two-step setup on the car so we can leave off the line under boost. And that should significantly improve track times and stuff like that. But other than that, guys, you guys just continue to stay tuned. And basically, if you're interested, continue following along with the build. I've taken this car from bone stock to exactly what it is today. I'm going to continue upgrading it this winter, hopefully plans are to do a built motor in the car maybe some slightly larger turbos i got 62 65s right now from comp they're oilless like to maybe do like a 64 67 or a 68 71 kind of depending on what we think is you know right for the car you don't want to go too big and it just not fit the setup if that makes any sense but like i said guys continue to stay tuned i'm going to try and get a couple videos out for you all there will be maybe a couple racing clips in here maybe some to come as well next time i take it to the track hopefully i can leave under boost so you guys definitely stay tuned for that but other than that guys like i said if you have any questions about any of the parts on here or you have any questions about any parts that you're going to install feel free to hit me up comment down below message me on instagram at down south racing 606 and uh, i'll try and help you any way i can guys so like i said hope you all enjoyed this video and thank you all for watching until next time peace